I'm sure you heard of this issue of Merry Christmas. Did you hear it? You heard it. Oh, so people started saying, Mufti Menk said you shouldn't say Merry Christmas to the Christians. I'm sure you heard that. Why do you want to just take a small piece of the statement and hold it out like this and make it seem like we are people who, who do not believe in, you know, a multicultural coexistence, multi-religious coexistence and so on? Let me tell you. I was asked about it recently in Singapore. And the reason I'm making mention of this is to show you that, look, we're not stupid. But sometimes people who want to look at it based on how the media has portrayed it, may come to a decision or a conclusion that is not enlightened. They haven't considered everything. So what happened? You see, we grew up, I grew up in Zimbabwe. We interacted from a young age with the Hindus, the Christians, the Jews, those who are from the African traditional faiths and so on, and we got along. We mixed in the schools from a young age, and as I grew up, I went to a high school that was purely Christian Catholic. And that was the best option we actually had. They allowed me whatever I had, we, and obviously we catered for them, they catered for us. There was a lot of respect, and that's how we developed. Okay? However, when it came to Christmas, there were so many Christians who didn't believe in it. They said, no ways, this is wrong. I recall a young boy, I even know his name, and he was with me. He didn't used to like to participate in religious studies because he belonged to a certain sect of Christianity. And he used to say, these guys don't know what they're talking about because X, Y, and Z, and he gave his reasons, that's not the topic today. But there are Christians who don't believe in Christmas. They don't participate in it. Is there anything wrong if they don't believe in Christmas, Christians? There's nothing wrong. They didn't participate in it. There's nothing wrong. But the minute they put a block on someone else who believes otherwise, then there's a problem. That's what we're saying. So the question you have to ask yourself, did you stop people from celebrating what they want? No. Did you ban them? No. Did you disallow them? Did you spread hatred against them? No. All you said is, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَدِينَ you have your faith and I have mine. So as we grew up, there were a few Hindus who, grew, who were with me at school. One of them used to eat beef. And I asked him, I said, how come you eat beef? Isn't this supposed to be your, you know, one of the gods that you consider uh, you know, a god with respect to them, with due respect to them? But he says, no, this is a special beef. I didn't understand that, but it was just that, okay, I'm not such a strict Hindu. That's what it meant. There were other Hindus who would tell him, listen, you are wrong. There were other Hindus who told him, you are wrong. And there were other Hindus who tried to correct him. But he kept on eating it. And then, when it came to Eid al-Adha of the Muslimin, they would never congratulate us. Why? Because we are sacrificing or slaughtering their God, so to speak. We never ever felt bad. Don't expect and please don't expect a Hindu to tell you Eid Mubarak at Eid Al-Abha. Respect them and understand that what you are doing is blasphemous to them, but they've allowed you to continue. It doesn't mean they hate or they are intolerant. It just means that they believe differently and they have a separate system of belief and it would be insulting to them to actually come onto this side here and tell you, look, as much as you're cutting my God, but well done, welcome, enjoy it, you know, enjoy that. You don't expect it. Come on, use your brain. This is what tolerance and coexistence is all about. It's not about a statement. It's more about allowing them to believe what they have to with respect in the way that you respect what they have as well. That's all it is. So what happened is as time passed, it was amazing because when it comes to the other faiths, we found the same. People didn't participate in some rituals of other faiths that did not make them bigots. But they respected each other. There was a young man who became a Muslim from the Hindus. The day they were, you know, when they, when they die, what happens is they burn the body. They put it, they cremate that body. So this young man, his father had died and they were cremating the body and they asked him as the oldest son to actually light, light the fire. And he said, look, as much as you want me to do it, and that's my father, I'm sorry, it goes against my beliefs. And it caused a commotion until some of those who were wise who knew, they said, look, that's the man's beliefs. Come on, leave him. Let the next son do it. How can you impose on him some... 
The, the, the idea is to coexist with your difference. That's what makes you a rainbow nation. That's what it is. But you don't shove your opinion down the throats of others. Just like now, in the Western world, they are banning you from covering your hair in some countries. That would create another problem. Why? Like the Honorable Minister said, it would make people feel that they are at war with the system. Because, hey, you know what? This is my basic right to believe something. I believe this is wrong. I believe this is right. That's the idea. So, from among the Muslims, there are those who believe that it's okay to participate in, in Christmas. And from among the Christians, there are those who believe that it's not okay to participate in Christmas. Look at the irony. But the idea is, if you believe that, by all means, go ahead. You are answerable to Allah, not to me. If this one believes otherwise, go ahead. But please don't impose it on me. If I don't want, it's one of those things. Come on. You know, live and let live. Today, the problem is with all parties. We believe we are the only ones who are right. So we want to shove our opinions down the throats of the rest of the world. If not, they are the problem, they are the terrorists, they are the issue, they are this, that. Watch out. The words you are using will be used against you as well. Be careful. So this is why we say, as I grew up, I, I, you know, still we used to sit and eat together as young boys. College. You know, you have your lunch, they have their lunch. We knew that if you have a beef burger, please don't offer it to the Hindus. It's insulting. It's blasphemous. They would actually feel so hurt. Don't. Would you ever, if you have Hindu friends, actually tell them, hey, have some beef. I don't think so. Exactly the same could be said about pork and the Muslims. Do you agree? Imagine if your friend says, this is a pork burger, come on, bacon tastes nice, you know, come on, come on. You know, how would you feel? They respect you, you get along with them, you build the nation, you contribute towards the building of the nation together. Do you know that? But you have different dietary restrictions which are respected. So, this is something that we need to talk about. It's got nothing to do with this person is intolerant. There is a big difference between difference of opinion and intolerance. Very big. I can differ with you right now. I can differ with you on a hundred matters, but I'm so tolerant. I promote tolerance. I promote coexistence. I promote the fact that all of us should contribute towards the development of our nation. Here in Malaysia, you have people, you have the Chinese, you have the Malays. You, on, on the other hand, you have Muslims, you have Buddhists, you have perhaps people who belong to Christianity, maybe even you know, Jewish people, whatever other faiths, I don't know how the, the nation is made in terms of, you know, the various faiths, but I'm sure there are more than 20 or 30 different faiths. Look at the civil service, you will have people belonging to every race and to every religion, and they are serving the nation. That's what they're doing. What are they doing? Serving the nation.